But before we read, shall we just have a moment of prayer? Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. Genesis chapter 29. Genesis chapter 29. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the land of the people of the east. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field, and lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well they watered the flocks, and a great stone was upon the well's mouth. And thither were all the flocks gathered, and they rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the sheep, and put the stone again upon the well's mouth in his place. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran are we. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban the son of Nahor? And they said, We know him. And he said unto them, Is he well? And they said, He is well. And behold, Rachel his daughter cometh with the sheep. And he said, Lo, it is yet high day, neither is it time that the cattle should be gathered together. Water ye the sheep, and go and feed them. And they said, We cannot, until all the flocks be gathered together, until they roll the stone from the well's mouth. Then we water the sheep. And while he yet spake with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she kept them. And it came to pass, when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near, and rolled the stone from the well's mouth, and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel, and lifted up his voice, and wept. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's brother, and that he was Rebekah's son, and she ran and told her father. And it came to pass, when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him, and embraced him, and kissed him, and brought him to his house. And he told Laban all these things. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me for naught? Tell me, what shall thy wages be? And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah was tender-eyed, but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Abide with me. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed unto him but a few days for the love he had to her. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, that I may go in unto her. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place, and made a feast. And it came to pass in the evening, that he took Leah his daughter, and brought her to him, and he went in unto her. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zilpah his maid for an handmaid. And it came to pass, that in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done unto me? Did not I serve with thee for Rachel? Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? And Laban said, It must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. Fulfill her week, and we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled her week, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife also. And Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Bilhah his handmaid to be her maid. And he went in also unto Rachel, 
and he loved also Rachel more than Leah, and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived, and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction, now therefore my husband will love me. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons, therefore was his name called Levi. And she conceived again, and bare a son, and she said, Now will I praise the Lord. Therefore she called his name Judah, and left bearing. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, an instruction to obey, a promise to claim. Pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
me feel just one touch on thy hand. I want to walk as long as I possibly can, possibly can. And if I fail, let me feel just one touch of your hand. I want to walk as long as I possibly can, possibly can. And if I fail, let me feel just one touch of your hand. I want to walk as close as I possibly can. Missions across the world. Anything this world can offer me, for I know that He alone can satisfy. Just to know He's leading in my life, it's worth everything that I might sacrifice. Oh, I want Jesus more than anything.
angels waiting on his every call. But one day I saw him all alone on the road to death, and I told that to me, just for me, he suffered was a price he paid. Take As I go home through life with him, there can be no other way. I want Jesus more than anything. As I go home through life with him,
They say it's of possibilities at the larger state, North Central Nigeria. Niger State is the alpha location. This September 2022, 22nd to 27th, 1600 hours GMT. The guard of all possibilities live at the trade fair complex, Shango Abuja Road, Mina, Niger State, and broadcast to the world live via satellite, social media, radio and television. Featuring special conference where ministers and professionals will experience faith for all possibility. And the Impact Academy will be a super flight of extraordinary pace setters for all youth, young adults and professionals. The humble, honest and holiness inspired man of excellence, your GCK convener, Dr. W.F. Kumui will be ministering along with the American gospel singer Paul Baloch, the God of all possibilities for everyone, governors, kings and queens. My name is Dr. Shem Zagbai Nuhu, the former deputy governor of Niger State, and I'm glad to be associated with Pastor Kumui. I want to use this opportunity to invite all Nigerians to the global crusade with Kumui. GCK, this September, your season of possibilities. Nothing is impossible. Man and God separated by sin. There is a gulf of separation between sinful man and the holy God. And Christ is the bridge on which the sinner can go and then get to God in relationship with God and in union with God, reconciled unto God. And to do that, the sinner needs to know about Christ, Christ the Savior, and Christ who has paid the whole price of his redemption. Christ, whose ministry is to bring man unto God so that man will enjoy fellowship with God now and relationship with God now as well as fellowship and relationship with God all through eternity. The Lord has committed that ministry into our hands and we're called ambassadors of Christ, we're called the preachers of the gospel, we're called evangelists and soul winners and we're to go into the world and bring sinners out of the world and bring them to Christ who now links them up with God. For us to be reconciled with God, we need the mediator, the one that stands between and brings us from where we were to where we ought to be in the Lord. He's given us the gospel so that we tell the sinner and then as we tell him he responds to that he comes to christ he is saved he becomes a child of god they have a drive within them and they are hurrying fast into hell and we need to stop them quickly and tell them the end of the journey of sinfulness is bitter it's painful it's terrible it's eternally tormenting and so we show them the sacrifice of what the sinless christ mediator has done to save them from their hellish pursuit look at second corinthians chapter 5 verse 11 knowing therefore the terror of the lord will persuade men knowing the terror of the Lord. Our world does not know that there is a terror of the Lord. They might know about the terror of men and they call them whatever name. They might know about the terror of Satan. They fear that more than the terror of God because they don't even know there's any terror from the Lord. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord will persuade men the people who don't talk to men about salvation, about repentance, the people who don't talk to anyone about reconciling with God, they don't know the terror of God. If you knew the terror of the Lord as well as, as Paul knew the terror of the Lord, you will rise up and that will drive you to do something. If you knew the terror of the Lord, like Jesus Christ knew the terror of the Lord upon 
sinners who are dying without Christ and without salvation. And Christ knew the damnation they will have, the torment they will have, the suffering they will have, the pain they will have because of that. He warned men. The apostles knew the terror of the Lord on sinners, on backsliders, on the people who are only religious and they do not have the righteousness of God. And the apostles warned their hearers of the terror of the Lord. The reason why anyone is cold, the reason why anyone is lazy, the reason why anyone is idle and is not preaching the gospel, is not talking to the sinners, is not a kind of bringing the word of life unto them is because they do not know, we do not know, we do not sense, we do not feel the terror of the Lord. When you see a backslider, do you remember the terror of the Lord? When you see a sinner, do you remember the terror of the Lord? When you talk to people that you don't know whether they are saved or not, they're just acquaintances or their friends or their relations or whoever they are, when you see the young and they're doing evil, and when you see the men and the women and they're living in sin, when you see churchgoers, even people that come to our church and you see them living in sin and doing evil, do you remember the terror of the Lord? No, you don't remember. Because if you remembered, you would have spoken to them. You would have felt it, the pain, the agony, the torment they will have in eternity. If you knew it, you will be talking to everybody. You'll not mind whether they disregard you or belittle you or whether they scorn you or whether they criticize you. If you knew the terror of the Lord, you'll persuade men. There are people that think that God will not judge anyone. They say God loves them unconditionally. That whether they do evil or they do good, it doesn't matter. That God had loved them from all eternity, even before they were born. And now that they are born, and whatever life they live, living in sin and living in evil, that God loves them unconditionally. The Bible does not say that, for we know He him that has said vengeance belongeth unto me and I will recompense says the Lord and again the Lord shall judge his people. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked. God is angry with the sinner. It's not just, you know, the sinful thing that he has done. People say God is angry with the sinful act, but he loves the sinner. It's, they say he loves you anyhow. He loves you anyway. Well, even though you are wicked, he loves you, but he doesn't love your wickedness. And people have taken that in, and they're not taking time to persuade the wicked. Because they say, after all, God loves him. Look at this. God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. Rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let us rise up and pray. The child, our Father and the Lord has given is very clear that Jesus is the bridge, Jesus is the mediator between Faithfulness to her generation. I 
I will sing all the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing all the mercies of the Lord. I will sing all the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing all the mercies of the Manifestation tonight, deliverance tonight, moving up mountains tonight, verifiable miracles in every life. Confirm it to Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, I read from verse 4. Surely, there's no doubt in the word of God, surely. There's no doubt in the promises of God. Surely, there is no doubt in the manifestation of the power of God. Surely, he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him stricken and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. And he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Tell me what you see here. And with his stripes, we are healed. Somebody there is going to be fulfilled in your life. With his stripes, we are healed. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 8. And I read from verse 16. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out, and he cast out. Every negative thing tonight, cast out. Every oppression tonight, cast out. Every tormenting spirit tonight, cast out. Anything tormenting your life, hindering you from moving forward, everything you have feared until today, they are cast out in Jesus' name. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed how many of us? And he healed how many of us today? And he healed all that was sick. But why? Because they shouted. Because they had great faith. No, look at this. It says that it may be fulfilled. God is jealous over his word. And God is jealous over the prophecies that have been made. And he wants to make sure that every word of his that came out of his mouth is fulfilled. That's why you are here tonight. There's going to be a fulfillment tonight. In your family, a fulfillment. In your place of work, a fulfillment. The word of God will be yes and amen in your life tonight in Jesus' name that it might be fulfilled, who was, which was spoken by says the prophet, saying himself, himself, not an angel, himself, not a man, himself, Jesus Christ himself, took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses. Thank God you got it tonight. Verifiable miracles. What kind of miracles are you having tonight? Say it aloud. Verifiable miracles. I'm looking at First Peter chapter 2. First Peter chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 24. 24. Who is own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sins, should live unto righteousness. The rest is for you to read out aloud. By whose stripes ye were healed. Tonight I'm talking to you on complete healing and health by his stripes. Complete, total, full, entire. There'll be no subtraction in your miracle. I said there'll be no subtraction in your miracle. Total, everything the Lord has for you tonight, you will carry, go home. You will possess. You will experience. I'll see it in your life. Complete healing and health by his stripes. 
There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the proclamation of your healing and health. Underline the word your. This one is yours. The proclamation of your healing and health. Number two, the prescription for your healing and health. There's a prescription. And once you follow the prescription, take the prescription, it is sure and definite. You are going to get your deliverance, your healing, your miracle, and the power of God will be upon your life in Jesus' name. Number three, the preservation of your healing and health. We get it, we're going to keep it. We get it, it's going to be permanent. You will not be up and down, in and out, and uh, seek and well, seek and well again, permanent healing and health for every one of us in Jesus' name. The preservation of your healing and health. Point number one is the proclamation of your healing and uh, health. You see, the Lord has made the proclamation for you to understand his love for you, his care of you, and your expectation should match the pro proclamation of the word of God. I'm looking at Exodus chapter 15, and I'm reading from verse 26. This is yours. Say, this is mine. In Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, I will do that which is right in his sight. I will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of, of these diseases upon thee. I thought somebody there will say, Amen which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that he let thee. You know, sometimes um, you look at things around you and you see something that should not be there, but you think in your mind, maybe that he put it there. And he has a reason for putting it there. And so you go by, leave that thing there. Or maybe it's the wife, it's my husband put this one here, he must have his receipt for putting it there. My wife put this in there. She must have a receipt for putting it there. And then you ask, Daddy, did you put that thing there? No, I didn't. My husband, did you put that thing there? No, I didn't. My wife, did you put that there? No, I didn't. Then we can remove it. God said, any sickness on the life, on the body of a child of God, he has not put it there. We must remove it tonight. Jesus must remove it tonight. The Holy Ghost must remove it tonight. He said, I will not put, I will not put, I will not put on thee any of the diseases which are brought upon the Egyptians. As you're looking at yourself, maybe God wants me sick. He said, no. Maybe once God wants me to suffer this. He says, no. Everything the Lord has not put in your life will be removed tonight. Every evil plant the Heavenly Father has not planted in your body, in your kidney, in your lungs, and in your livers, in your eyes, in your head, in your brain, in your leg, everything tonight, go in Jesus' name. And then he says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. What a proclamation. I am the Lord that healeth thee. Look at Psalm 107. I'm reading from verse 20. Psalm 107. I am reading from verse 20. It says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I want you to understand the word is the servant of the Lord. The word is like an angel of the Lord that is sent to go and do something. And the servant of the Lord, an angel, or Jesus Christ serving the Lord, or the word that is sent forth will not come back and say, you sent me, but I couldn't do it. Everywhere, 
every person, the Lord sends the word to you, there's going to be an accomplishment. He sent his word. He sent his word. He sent his word. Tonight, he's sending the word of power into your life. The word of deliverance in your life. And the word of renewal in your life in Jesus' name. Those nerves that are getting weak and dying, life has come. The nerves in your eyes and the backbone and everything that is wrong with you, life has come tonight. Where is that life coming tonight? It's coming to you over there. He sent his word, he sent his word, he sent his word and healed them. The word cannot fail. Remember, he spoke, it was done. He sent his word, let there be light, it was done. He sent his word, let there be ocean, let there be waters, it was done. He sent his word, let the fish come out of the river, it was done. Anything he says, that the devil cannot contradict him. Evil spirits cannot contradict him. Occultic powers cannot contradict him. He's sending the word tonight. I said he's sending the word tonight. And he's healing them, delivering them from all their destructions. Thank God the word is coming to you tonight. It will enter into your marrows. It will enter into your brain. All that insanity, insanity will vanish away. Madness will vanish away. Every yoke will be broken. I rejoice with you. The word is coming to you, setting you free. Look at Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Ah, my thoughts, I'm too sick. I don't think I can, I can get anything. That's your own thought. That's not the thought of God. I'm down. And the doctors told me that I have just a limited time to live. That's not God's thought about you. You have not finished your work here on earth. It's going to prolong your life. And it's going to heal you tonight. I see that healing coming your way. I see that deliverance coming your way. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, as the rain comes down, look up here for a moment. Let's say, for example, rain is coming down, and somebody stands in the rain, and he has uh, whatever in his hand, and he says, say, go back, go back, go back. Will the rain go back? I said, will the rain go back? Showers of blessing coming upon you tonight, coming down. Go back, go back. Can anybody send it back? Showers of healing. Showers of miracle. Showers of anointing. Every yoke in your life is broken tonight in Jesus' name. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it to bring forth and to bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void. It's going to perform healing. It's going to perform deliverance. It's going to give salvation. It's going to give freedom. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish in your life. It shall accomplish in your family. It shall accomplish in your place of work. It shall accomplish in your business. It shall accomplish in your ministry that which I please. What Satan pleases, what pleases Satan is cancelled. What pleases your enemies, they want to see you fall, all that is cancelled. What pleases the enemies of your progress, and they say he will not make, make progress, it's too late, the progress has come to stay. Because it will accomplish that which I please, 
and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. He sent his word. He sent his word. And it will prosper in the thing which he has sent. Look at Mark chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16. Verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Every creature. Every creature will enjoy the benefit of the gospel when they hear that gospel. And it's coming to you today. Gospel of salvation, gospel of healing, gospel of deliverance, gospel of grace, gospel of power. I lost an amen from that corner. That gospel that comes to every creature tonight, there'll be an accomplishment. Look at verse, look at verse 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Thank God I am a believer. I'm a believer in the Almighty God. I'm a believer in the God that created the heavens and the earth. I may believe in the Lord Jesus Christ that remains yesterday, today, and forever. I may believe in the Holy Ghost, in the power of the Holy Ghost. I may believe in all the promises of God. And then it says in verse 17, look at this. This one is mine. I said, this one is mine. I said, this one is mine. Nobody will take this one from me. You didn't say that for yourself. Nobody will take this one from me. You get it tonight, you get it every time in Jesus' name. And this sign shall follow. And this sign shall follow. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly sin, it shall not hurt them. Nobody will kill you before your time. In the village, nobody will kill you before your time. In the town, nobody will kill you before your time. In your office, nobody will kill you before your time. In the dream, nobody will kill you before the time. If you drink any deadly sin, it will not hurt you. They try to give you in the dream, you know something. You know? If somebody cannot give you something in day, day time, in life, and then it's waiting for when you are asleep, that one is a coward. A coward that comes to meet you in the dream. He knows you are sleeping, but you know, even when you are sleeping, there's a head of fire around you. I sleep, but my spirit is awake, and your spirit will reject every poison in the dream in Jesus' name. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. And then, look at this one, look at this one. It says, and they shall lay their hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Tonight, you recover. Tonight, I recover. Say, tonight I recover. So in verse 19, then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and he sat on the right hand of God. Oh, what's he doing there? He's making it a session right now as he's on the right hand side of God. What's he doing there? He's saying to the Father, Every word I gave the church must be fulfilled. That's what he's doing there. And tonight he's watching over us. And tonight he's saying yes to all his words that we're quoting. And tonight he's saying yes to all the word that is coming to you tonight. And he's watching over that word. And tonight you got it. And they went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them. The Lord walking with them. Is the Lord healing you tonight, walking with them? Is the Lord delivering you tonight, is walking with us? Is the Lord that is setting you free tonight, is walking with them, confirming the word or signs following? Confirming the word in your life or signs following? Signs are going to follow tonight. 
you will see your sign. I said you will see your sign. If you are lame, you'll jump up and walk. If you are blind, you open your eyes and see. If there's any sin, any medical report you brought in here, we're going to neutralize that medical report tonight. Every sin they said is impossible in your life. The God of all possibilities is here tonight. Is going to make it possible. Number one, number one, number one is the proclamation of your healing and health. Number two now is a prescription for your healing and health. The prescription, the prescription. Uh, if you've come across, uh, you know, a good a doctor before, and then they do medical tests, and they see what is there, they make prescription. And they give you this, they say, use this once a day. And once you use this, according to the prescription, the doctor will say, I am sure this sin will go. And then you come back in one week, and then you come to show yourself for a proof that this prescription actually works. And then you go, you take the thing in your hand. And then after you've gone faithfully, if they say 7 o'clock in the morning, you use that thing before breakfast, you do. Second day, third day, fourth day. And then by the time you come back, you are well. I said you are well. If your face is still looking like, what happened? The doctor will ask you, did you follow the prescription? And then you say, actually, actually, okay, I understand. You didn't take it as serious. You will start the prescription. Now, you know, doctors don't fight with patients. They say, you will take it again, but God's prescription, you'll take it today. And that prescription will work in your life. What's the prescription? What's the prescription? Look at Exodus again, chapter 15. And I'm reading from verse 25. Exodus chapter 15, verse 25. And said, if thou wilt, this is your own decision. And this is your own part. If thou wilt hearken to the voice of the Lord your God. That's the prescription. And do, and do what he has told you to do. That's the prescription. What is right in his sight. And keep ear to his commandment. And keep all his statutes. That's the pre prescription. Then he says, I will put none of the diseases upon you. Very simple. And that's what you're doing now. You came and you're hearing the word of God. And you're giving attention. And you're giving ear to what he's saying. And as you give ear to what he's saying, when we say rise up, let us pray. You give ear to that, you rise up. And then pray in the name of Jesus, no other name. And you pray in the name of Jesus. That's the prescription. And as you follow that prescription, I'm telling you, this one, it never fails. This prescription never fails. I rejoice with you tonight. You got it. I said, you got it. What do you get tonight? Miracles that are verifiable. What do you get tonight? We will see it together. Exodus, Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23. I'm reading from verse 25. Exodus 23 verse 25. And you shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless your bread and thy water and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. It says, you will serve the Lord your God. You know what God is saying? God is saying, I created you. Satan did not create you. So you will not serve Satan. I will not serve Satan. I created you. Idols did not create you. You will not serve idols. I will not serve idols. I created you. Evil powers did not create you. I will not make any covenant with evil powers. It says, if you will abandon all those you surpass in your life, and you're not allow anybody to usurp your skill, usurp your authority, and usurp your life, ye you shall serve the Lord your God. Whom are you going to serve? Who are you serving? That's the prescription. That's the prescription. It says, if you serve the Lord your God, it says, I will bless your bread. I will bless your water. 
and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. From the midst of thee. It's like, um, you know, the way somebody looks at you, and then your face is all right, your hands are all right, your standing is all right, you look good, and you say you are sick, you say, the sin is inside me, inside my lungs. It's inside my marrow, the marrow of my bone. It's inside my kidney. It's inside my brain. I feel it is walking all over. It's inside, God said, every sin inside that is not health, that is not healthy, is going to take everything away. I will take away sickness from the midst of thee. It is gone in Jesus' name. I said, your sicknesses are gone. Your infirmity is gone. Prescription, prescription. Let's come to James chapter 5. We're looking at the prescription for your healing and your health. In uh, James chapter 5, look at the prescription now. James chapter 5, uh, reading from verse 15. The prescription for your healing and uh, health. In James chapter 5, verse 15, uh, it says, and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You miss your amen. amen. What kind of prayer? There are many kinds of prayer. But the prescription is, as you want healing, the prescription, not the prayer of doubt, not the prayer of regret, not the prayer of crying, not the prayer of sorrow, not the prayer of self-condemnation. I'm no good, I'm bad, everybody knows, that's why this sickness came on me. Not the prayer of regret, the prescription. Take the prescription, the prayer of faith. I know my God is able. I know my God will heal me. I know my God is merciful. I know my God will not forsake me. And I come, I pray the prayer of faith. I am healed in Jesus' name. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. You're lying on the mat there. We're going to pray the prayer of faith, that the perception, and the Lord will raise him up. You've been on the bed of affliction for a long time, and the doctors have given you up. They say there's no hope, and the prayer of faith shall raise him up. Your neighbors are crying. Your neighbors, they say, this is impossible. We never saw anything like this before, and you yourself, you're lying there helplessly. The prayer of faith, tell me, tell me, shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. They shall be forgiven. Forgiveness available tonight. Salvation available tonight. Healing available tonight. Deliverance available tonight. Look at verse 16. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another. What does that mean? Just say, I'm sorry to somebody you have offended. And say, if the person, you cannot do that now because there you're sitting and the person is not even here. But you tell the Lord, I'm sorry for what I did to that person. And when I see him, I'm going to apologize. I'm going to say, yes, I was wrong. That's all. Confess your faults one to another. And then pray one for another. That's a prescription. That's a prescription. And then 